Hey everyone, this is Oscar from Underdog and today is a little video for those of you who are new to music theory and what I want to explain is what a power chord is. You see, when you learn music theory, very often, very quickly, the conversation is going to start being about triads, chords with three notes. And that usually takes the shape kind of like this. That's a triad, that's the C major triad. You have this note, this note, and this note. And then those notes, you can repeat them up and down the octaves for the same effect. So for instance, so you, so you can add, for instance, this note up here. And you're still very much working with triads, even though you can repeat those notes up and down the octaves. Now, certainly there's a lot more to explore where it gets more complicated than this, but there's something you should know about where it gets more simple than this. And so the simple version of a chord is sometimes referred to as a power chord. And what you do to create a power chord is, is you take the root note of the chord, then you add the fifth above it. That's usually the third note if you do the triads. And then you add the octave on top. This is a chord which we're going to call a power chord. So if you take any note and you think in terms of consonance and dissonance, the most consonant note that you compare with any given note is an octave up or down, right? So this note or this note. These are the most consonant notes you can imagine. And then the next most consonant note you can imagine is the perfect fifth in between. So these. To find the perfect fifth of any note, what you have to do is just go up seven semitones. That's like a magic number, seven semitones. So you start from any note and then you go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven semitones. A power chord. These kind of chords are less dense than the triads, but they still give you some kind of fullness to the harmony that you don't get from just playing single notes or from playing octaves. Forgive my terrible piano playing, I'm just trying to illustrate a concept. Something cool about a power chord is you don't have to worry about it being major or it being minor because you don't use that note that would be either major or minor. And if you're willing to get just a little bit nerdy with me for a moment, remember that every note on the piano corresponds to a particular frequency expressed in hertz. So we say that any particular note on the piano has a fundamental frequency. So if you imagine this C2 over here, which vibrates at about 130 hertz, and we go up an octave, then we go have a look and we see it's 260 hertz, so double. So every time you go up an octave, the frequency doubles. And the beauty of the perfect fifth is that there's also a clear mathematical relationship between the two. So we go back to the 130 hertz. And then if we play the G above that, the perfect fifth, you see that it's at about 195. So let me grab a calculator and let's look at 130. If we multiply it by one and a half, you get 195. So what does that mean? Well, it means that our ears are kind of like frequency calculation devices. We're very sensitive to mathematically harmonious proportions in the frequencies. So if any note and its octave doubles the frequency, then any note and its perfect fifth multiplies the frequency by 1.5. All the other possible note intervals also have some kind of mathematical relationship to each other, but none of them quite as clean and quite as pure as this one. The sine wave that I was just showing on my spectrum analyzer, of course, doesn't really correspond to what you hear in real life when a piano actually goes through. When a piano goes through a sound, you see all of these harmonics, right? These harmonics are the frequencies that sit on top of the fundamental, and they can be quite dense. And so if you play notes relatively far apart, you leave a lot of space for all the harmonics, and then you can do a process called overdriving or saturation, which generates new harmonics in between. So power chords are very often used by instruments, which are then going to get distorted afterwards. Guitars being a very good example of that. And another place where you can apply this is any synthesizer where you have multiple oscillators. Usually the first oscillator will play the note that you hold down on the keyboard. But then you can add a second oscillator here, which you can pitch up seven semitones. You hear how fat that sounds? That's the result of playing a note plus its seventh above. Let me add the third oscillator an octave up. Now I've created a really thick sound, a power chord, inside of our synthesizer, which is one hit of the finger. Listen to it without that fifth. This is just a note plus its octave. And now, plus that seven semitones. Fat, right? Thank you. 
And so that's another application of power chords right there. If you found this helpful, do be sure to hit like and subscribe, hit the little bell icon, or go check out my Foundations of Electronic Music course right here, where you can learn this and a lot more in a structured context. Come say hi to us on our Discord channel, and until next time, stay producing, be good to one another, and take care. Bye-bye.